Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just rolling, screaming at him. No. Dude, come on. No, I no. They're already all nervous as it is. I'm the intern took that. Karen's seat. She's gonna go guns yes, blazing. I'm, I'm not, but I am gonna quietly move uh, the intern over here. <laughs> Look at his little yeti. His little yeti's gonna yeti over here. Roll the. <laughs> here we go. Let's make it a good day. Tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. Oh. <laughs> yes! I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard. I did not do that. Now, here's Jason. Hi, everybody. Kendall, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. We have a packed audience today. Because we have a guest today that's bringing about three to 400 snakes into the studio. And what's lovely is uh, we normally, we have overflow uh, into our front row and it's, uh, there's two women, uh, God bless them. Uh, they, they, they had no idea when they signed up that they were gonna be in the front row. It's like the Gallagher row, when Gallagher used to hit watermelons and they get wet. So uh, they're in the front row. They will be holding snakes at some point during the show. Yeah. And then we have a whole section of young people. Uh, Amer <laughs> and the ones that don't know who I am uh, have to hold the snake too. That's, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> who the hell is this guy? Anyway, we have a great show. We do have a snake lady. I'm gonna give you my review of Indiana Jones. Some lucky audience members are gonna win some Indiana Jones prize packs. So let's get the whip going and start the show. Rolling, Leo, here we go. Welcome to Kindle Mark, everybody. Hi, hi. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Happy Thursday. How you doing? Happy Thursday. I liked the pose that you strutted. I don't know if everybody else the got little to pose, see that. Yeah, but I just I don't pose. know. I just felt like doing something different. You doing well? Yes. How's the baby? Baby's good. Um, baby's probably. We'll see if they're afraid of snakes. Yeah. Is yeah. the baby? Uh, we we've been following that that dumb size chart that you know. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. how big is the baby this week? The, the size of the Mad Capper's teapot. <laughs> the Mad Hatter? The Mad Hatter? Oh, sorry, the Mad Ma Capper's a bar. Mad Hatter. The Mad, Mad from yeah. Alice in Wonderland? Yes. Hatter. Can we the get Mad another Capper's list? A bar. Just to get, that for shapes we actually can identify. Oh, a, oh, 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 oh. Okay, an, wait. An acorn squash. Oh. Now we're talking. I mean, there are various sizes of acorn squash, but I mean, I yeah. It's like the three pounds and 15 inches or something. Are they kicking a lot more nowadays, these, these days? Yes. Yeah, are they? Yes. I can, this yeah. This little hoodlum. It's like, yeah. you do <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Because when do you do, I forgot, what do you do, September? September. September, Just yes. Just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Just in time for season nine. You know uh -huh. what I mean? A new Just season, <laughs> we're going to birth a baby. Yep. Can't see that on the view. And now I, I thought I, I thought I would ask live since it'll put pressure on you. Can we have cameras in the? Do you mind if we stream the 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 the, the proceedings? Like a Kardashian. <laughs> oh wait, wait! Executive can producer Jeff has ixnayed that idea. Oh. We can't do that. We could yeah. have Pierre do a little play-by-play. -play. A little play. <laughs> we'll have the sports department do a play-by-play. -play. Yeah. <laughs> be nice i just i i'll be i you know i can provide ice chips for you you know what okay, i mean Okay, if you were in the room can you imagine jason no can you no <laughs> no oh god i'm He's faint oh god like a goat I, i'm already gay i would be super gay after that like just i would be <laughs> super gay <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing? I'd be like, I'd be like Mrs. Doubtfire from the refrigerator. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. 
let's let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. First up, friends. Oh, scary news for our girl Madonna as she gets ready. You know, she was supposed to launch her uh, celebration tour. So here's the deal. This got just dropped yesterday. Page six is saying she was found unresponsive on Saturday and rushed to the hospital. Yeah, see, the thing, that unresponsive thing is what scares me. Then this also scared me. They said she was intubated for one night. Uh, now, these are pictures from her Instagram just last week. Her manager said that she developed a really serious bacterial infection. Now, the good news, and we'll take what we can, she's out of the ICU, and all of her peeps are saying that she's expected to have a full recovery, which is, that's great. And uh, her buddy, Rosie O'Donnell, they've been friends since 1992, since League of Their Own. Rosie posted this morning or last night that Madonna's getting better. Uh, and I, I gotta tell you, yeah. And no offense, no offense to Madonna's PR team, mm -hmm. but I, I take Rose, I, I'll take Rosie's, because right. Rosie don't care, she'll just be honest. Mm -hmm. I'll take her, her, uh, uh, her take on her it, take on it mm -hmm. before the PR people who try usually to spin it in the right. best direction, you know? Rosie will sound the alarm yeah. if necessary. But it's scary. It is. It's really scary. Her tour, by the way, was supposed to begin in just a couple of weeks. Oof. And I, I'm telling you, I've had people in my life, you know, Colin, he's had a serious, he had a, a real, he, he had, he doesn't, he, I have permission to say this. He had MRSA. Uh, mm -hmm. Now she does not have MRSA, but I'm talking about bacterial infections. Right. My point of bringing that up is it's nothing to mess around with. And not only does Madonna have to get better, just better, but then you got to prepare for a worldwide ginormo tour. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to be pessimistic. It's going to be months before this tour is back on, in right. my my guess. Right. Um, and I, I was going to go. I'm I'm bummed, mm -hmm. but I just I wanted to get better. You yeah, know? it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Next in the dish. We wish you the best, Madge. Okay, now how many of the young people know who Madonna is? Let's just do that. All, oh, okay, stop. thank you. I was just taking. Oh yeah, of course yeah, yeah. they do. She's Madonna. Did any of them not raise their hands? Because they're going to be the first one fed to the snake. That's right. Yeah, okay. If she didn't raise her hand, she's food item number one for the snake. Okay. <laughs> Jason, why don't young people go to your show? Well, I've threatened them to feed them to snakes. That's why, yeah. It's casual. Next on the dish, Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, SJP, was on Howard Stern yesterday. They're really good friends. They always really do. They do a great interview together because um, it's real. They're good conversations. Uh, one of the things that she talked about was something rather surprising about SJP's daily life. Listen. You take the subway a lot. Took it all day yesterday. No, 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 stop it. This is <laughs> this is crazy to me. A, a subway. I, what are you proving here? I mean, this I'm is not proving anything. What are you doing? Getting, Why would you, you do that? If you look at Google Maps and yeah. you put in your address, I'm going to say 99% of the time, the fastest way to get there is the train. It's just You're the truth. You're not petrified down there? Oh, God, no. Mm -mm. What is your worst? Uh, come clean. Something bad must have happened to oh, you I've down in that all. subway. I've uh, what seen it you all. <laughs> well, she said. She she said her and Matthew Broderick married. Mm -hmm. uh, they went down. They took the subway on either the first or the last day of New York Pride, and she said, "I mean, because look." She's like a fly strip for gays. I yeah. mean, she really is. I mean, we love her. I mean, we're like, I mean, I don't care what she's doing. We just, we fly to her, you know? <laughs> so just flutter right to Hello. her. And, uh, and she said she wouldn't tell exactly what happened, but you can just guess that she was inundated with people, you know, because <laughs> I can see, I would, I would, I, you know, I've met her right. and I lost my mind. I rare, I, I. He didn't wash his hand for days and that's not a joke. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. He wouldn't and let me touch that hand. I don't get. I, I don't get like that. You know. And this isn't a, in a. I, I don't say this in a braggy way. But right. we've met in all these years. I've met a lot of famous people. I met Julie Andrews and Emma Thompson and. But, but forever for whatever reason, SJP came to the Mall of America and she came from around the corner and I just turned it. I just. I went like this. I go hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love you. Yeah. <laughs> love you. <laughs> SJP says she's never, ever had a bodyguard because she thinks bodyguards and security actually draw more attention. Yes. Sometimes it does. She says that when they're taping Sex in the City. One thing she won't do is take selfies, though. She won't take selfies. She goes, because she never looks good in them. Instead, she tells the people she would prefer to talk to them. Um, she, and then when people go, why don't you take selfies? She goes, the government. <laughs> people never ask her. And she did not talk about Kim Cattrall. She did not. She did not. But mm -hmm. Kim Cattrall was on The View. We'll get to that later. But she was, everybody's talking about Kim, but, mm -hmm. but SJP. I think SJP is like, look. We've had enough drama. Right. We got a cameo out of her. We don't want to poke the bear. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it be. We'll just leave it mm -hmm. be. Lots more to come. But first, don't forget to sign up to be part of our studio audience. We don't have snakes every day. We have openings throughout the month of July. Go to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show and then pick your day. And please, only pick a day where you can actually be here. And going to break, let's check out some audience selfies from this month. We love taking pictures with the people when we come back. Back in a moment. Welcome back. Oh, I'm excited. It's one of those days where I wake up and go, oh, God, I'm glad I have a show uh, because I'm excited <laughs> to tell you something. So it's been more than 40 years since movie fans were uh, first introduced to Indiana Jones uh, back in the 80s with Raiders of the Lost Ark. And in honor of the new movie, I wanted to take a, a look back because it's, you know, Throwback Thursday at my favorite movie from the franchise, which isn't everybody's favorite. It's our Throwback Thursday. <laughs> Shorty, Chow Chi, Latsu Santa. Hang on, lady, we go for a ride. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is he nuts? You know that. He's crazy. More. <laughs> That is the first sequel to Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, featuring Short Round, that's right, future Oscar winner, Kihu Kwan. Uh, it really, it's, it's my favorite. I know it's not everybody's favorite, but I think it's because I saw it at just the right age, and it is really good. Okay, so why am I showing you that? Well, last night, I got a chance to see the fifth movie in the franchise, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Harrison Ford is back under the fedora. Uh, take a look. set pieces. I'm going to bottom line it for you as I always try to do right off the top. Forget the critics that said it's boring, it's terrible. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Right. And though I have an emo I, I, I do have a connection to the because it's I, again I grew up in the 80s so I love the franchise. I was ready to call balls and strikes like ball. I was ready to tell you the truth if I didn't like it. I would have mm -hmm. been disappointed but luckily I don't have to tell you that today. I, I honestly don't know what the beef is. Um, you know, the, 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 the reviews coming out of Khan that, that it was eh, tepid, some reviews were just bad. I don't get it. <laughs> because here's some of the positives. First, uh, let's talk about Harrison Ford. Uh, Harrison Ford is a great version of Indy. They don't run away from the fact that he's in his 70s. They acknowledge it, which, which helps the buy-in. He jokes that he's had, you know, fake knees and he's been shot at five times and he's not as young as he used to be. 
He's fantastic. You're looking at a scene right there at the top of the movie. Uh, here's another positive, the de-aging. The first sequence of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny features a de-aged Harrison Ford. Again, some of the shishi poo poo critics have had a problem with this. Sit down. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fantastic. Now look, in five, seven years, are we, you know, when the, the technology advances, are we gonna look back and go, okay, he's a little rubbery? Perhaps. But for this movie, he looks fantastic. Another positive. Another. Another positive is action sequence after action sequence after action sequence. And again, because I'm trying to counter all the negative reviews, uh, people have said, oh, it's so fantastical. It's so unbelievable. It, it, New York Times called it silly. It's supposed to be silly. It's supposed to be silly. It's an Indiana Jones movie. Nobody can do those things but Indiana Jones. Mm. That's why you go to the movies. That's why you go to the movies to have a good time. It's supposed to be outrageous. The other criticism was that the ending, that the ending was fantastical and crazy. Have you seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> the end of the movie, the Nazis are melted by beams of light. <laughs> But um, ching. And this, this does, the, there is an ending twist that you go, oh, well, that's interesting. But it fits with the movie. And then there's an emotional, then it comes at you at the very end with an emotional punch that I did tear up. Any fan of the franchise, you'll go like this. Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a nice chef's kiss. And then my final thing is Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Another thing that critics have been, uh, 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 is that she's taking over the movie or Indiana Jones is second to her character. Sit down, <laughs> sit down. She's great. You know why? Because her character is gray. Her character is interesting. Is she good? Is she bad? Is she changing? How much does she really love Indy? She's fascinating. Hmm. All of this that I just said, adds up to a movie that you should go to the theater to see if you want a fun summer night with a $57 uh, dollar bucket of popcorn and, 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 uh, and a $30 Diet Coke. You, it's fantastic. It's a little long. That's one of my negatives. It's, they could have trimmed 15 minutes from it. And um, it, 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 it drags a little bit in, in certain parts, but that's minimal. Overall, bravo, bravo. <laughs> Yeah. You didn't give it a letter. What? You didn't give it a letter. You always if give I'm going to give it a letter grade, it is a, a fun A minus. Wow. A, yeah. That's pretty good for him. It really is. Because it's not, this isn't cinema. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's fun. Colin, who's a tougher judge than me and has no connection, loved it, I think, even more than I did. And I was nervous, you know? Right. Anyway, let's move on. Kim Cattrall is making the rounds. Remember I told you? She was, uh, um, she was on the show that you don't watch because you're watching this one, The View. <laughs> she talked briefly, a girl, I mean briefly, about her cameo in And Just Like That. Look what she said. Fans, myself included, are just thrilled to hear that you're going to have a scene in the new season of And Just Like That, yes. reprising your iconic role. What, what can you share with us? Well, it's very interesting to get a call from the head of HBO yeah. saying, what can we do? And I went, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get creative. And one of those things was to get Pat Field back. Oh, Because great. I just thought, you know, if I'm going to come back, i got to come back with that kind of Samantha style. Yes. Yes. i got to push yes. it. Yes. And, uh, and we did. And we did. Uh, and we'll see that. Alle allegedly, her cameo is in the season finale. Mm -hmm. I, I look, Ringo Star, peace and love. I love, I like Kim, <laughs> but I, I, there's a lot of drama, Mama. You know what I mean? And right. it's just like, oh, I got a call from the, the head of HBO, HBO. and it, I think that was kind of a little jab to the other women. Right. I, I don't know. I just, I wish they look. Not everyone can get along, and you don't always get along with people you work with. I do, just FYI, but yeah, yeah, but. Um, Every day. But I just wish the drama was over and they could just come together, you know, and stop right. this nonsense. Life is too short.
We'll talk about um, Kim's new show, Glamorous, in just a second. Uh, because next in the dish, I've recently gotten into two shows. We're calling this segment Love and Hate. Uh, one of them I love, and one of them I would rather put a campfire out with my face than watch again. Um, subtle. It's subtle. First up, we're going to start with the positive here on The Jason Show. Starting with the positive, a show that I love but also it's a little cringy, but in a good way. It's called Crack Addicts. And right about now, <laughs> now, right now you're thinking to yourself, Jace, why are you watching shows about drugs? It's not about drugs. Yes, we are. It's not, but it's not. It's about people who go to the chiropractor. Uh, and here's a, <laughs> I, I, I love it when the audience is 14 seconds behind me. I love it. Okay. Here's a clip. Now, warning. This is what freaked me out. There are a lot of cracking sounds, okay? Oh. Get ready. Mm. Oh. Oh. oh, God. Mm. Oh, my God. I am Dr. Alessandra Colon, and I am a chiropractor in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Everybody has their own canvas. I work with the body. That's my canvas. <laughs> When most people think about chiropractors, they think I'm gonna perform jujitsu, kill them, rip their head off. I don't want someone to break me. I've always been nervous with chiropractors. When you adjust somebody and you just see their eyes like roll back into their head. Ooh. Wow. Huh? That's a chiropractic adjustment. Ugh. We are doctors of the nervous system. We do everything from ears to shoulders, to elbows, hips, toes, knees. The nervous system controls the whole body, so essentially anything goes. <laughs> We just lost, lost half of our audience. We just lost half of our audience. I just lost my life. I love this. I'll bottom line it because I want to get to the hate. But uh, I love this. But I watch it like you watch like a, an accident. Uh, because I, I should go, my family, my, uh, everyone tells me I should go to the chiropractor. You but should. I'm the, But I, I know you do too. Uh -huh. But it freaks me out a little bit. And but that I doesn't? I don't know yet if this makes it worse. Anyway, Crack Addicts airs on TLC and streams on Max. And now for the hate portion of Love and Hate. Now, now I fear this is going to upset the youngins because they love, I read that they love the show, but that's okay. It's the new Kim Cattrall show on Netflix called Glamorous. Now, before I rip it to shreds, uh, here's a clip. Hey guys, it's me, Marco. And makeup is my life. I got you a job. I already have a job. You gotta join the real world. It's all yours. We'll get that fixed. You're literally Madeline Addison. What do I do? Do I bow? I'll bow. Please don't. Why does the supermodel of the world start a makeup empire? Because nobody thought I could. I know someone who might be hiring. Glamorous by Madeline is one of the industry's most respected beauty brands. I'm Madeline's first assistant. As far as you're concerned, I am everything and everyone that matters to you during your time here, so pay attention. It looks cute. I hated it. Okay. I absolutely hated it, and, and I wish I could like it, because as Kim Cattrall, the, the, on, on the press tours, they said, it's a tip of the hat to Ugly Betty and the Devil Wears Prada. The problem with the tip of the hat is only do a tip of the hat if you can do something and elevate it. Other than the fact, and I don't want to dismiss this, I love that there's more representation. I want to be Crystal Carrington clear when I say that. But other than that, I'm glad that we ended with that scene where Marco runs into the glass door. That is an exact scene from Ugly Betty. They're not doing anything different with it. It's literally... Uh, uh, it's a lame facsimile of better things. And I wish it was better. And, and Kim Cattrall, she, one of the reasons she left Sex and the City, other than that she didn't get along with the girls, is because she wanted to do other types of roles. I'm sorry to tell you this, you're still playing Samantha. That's still Samantha. It's no different. It's just Samantha selling Clinique. <laughs> I love Clinique. We love Clinique. Clinique got a boo? <laughs> My mom loved Clinique. Yeah. I had oily skin, according to them. 
You know, you take the chart test. Never mind. Never mind. Back on me. Back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you know? Glamorous is available on Netflix. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Superstar, and she just happens to have hundreds and hundreds of snakes. The snake lady will join us live in studio. Oh, please help me with this one. And then a little later, our studio audience will have a chance to win some Indiana Jones prize packs. That and more when The Jason Show continues. I just want to say, if the following segment goes wrong, it's all intern Mason's fault. He produced this. Our next guest is showing people that you don't always have to be afraid of snakes. Sure. Uh, more than 800 million people have seen her educational, think about that number, everyone, have seen her educational reptile content on YouTube. Look at this. Let's feed this black rat snake. Oh, you dipped your head in the water, and so we may as well drink the water that's on our face. This one has a huge appetite, just like your average rat snake does. Hey, you ready? That, no, nope, not me, really? Ah. Uh, she also has, or he also has really bad aim. All right, let go, let go, let's let go. Please let go. Thank you. Let's try that again. Here, eat this mouse. Yep, smell it. There you go. Jeez. <laughs> Out of all the clips for the intern to pick, <laughs> he picks that one. Yeah, way to go, Mason. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up from the Snake Discovery Center, our friend Emily Roberts. <laughs> That's going to do it for us. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, everyone. OK. Um, all kidding aside, since we've seen you last, you, I want to offer congrats. You have exploded on, I mean, on, on social media. I mean, you're, you. what got you? I want to start here, because the longer I talk to you, the less time I have with snakes. Um, what, first of all, tell the folks, what is snake discovery? Ah, you know, snake discovery is really an experience. We're in Maplewood. We have a reptile store. We have an indoor reptile zoo with 75 exhibits of reptiles and amphibians. And we have a party room for reptile birthday parties. What are we looking at here? These are some of our most popular videos on our YouTube channel. And it's actually happening right now at our facility. Snakes are hatching out of the eggs this time of year. Oh, this is snake hatching season? That's exactly what we call it, actually. It's my favorite time of year. Mine too. Oh my yeah, gosh. I know it is. Okay, um, now I have more questions, but I'm being told that despite my best efforts, we got to show some snakes. So, yeah. <laughs> Say the morning prayer. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Now, can, oh, can I do the... Okay, let me... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> use your words, Jason. Use your words. Uh, my, uh, one of my dear best friends, Jason Diener, may I identify the reptile? I think I know what this is. Go for it. Let's hear it. Ball python. You're really close. Really close. It does start with the letter B. Can he not look at me? Uh, just the, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. What, it's not, Burmese? Oh, that's also a really good guess. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Okay, what is he? This is a boa constrictor. Oh, a boa constrictor. Okay. Yes. Um, is that a female or a male? He is a male, and he's about seven and a half feet long. But if he was a female, he'd be around eight and a half to nine feet long. Yeah. Really? That's th there's that big of a size difference. Yeah, females get bigger. Do you know why? Why? Because we're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you are. 
uh, a, a docile creature? Very docile, yes. These are actually really good pets despite their large size. His name is Doug. You can't go wrong with a name like okay. Doug. I, I love when pets are named human names. That's, <laughs> that's Doug the snake. Okay. Um, and th is this as long, big as Doug will get? Hi, Doug. Stop looking at me. He's just, <laughs> he's just really uh, looking at me. I think he wants to say hi to you. He, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. May I, may I touch his middle region? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> They're not slimy like a lot no, of people oh, think. No, see, they, he feels like uh, the ball python. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they have the same, similar, yeah. Yeah, if you've never touched a snake before, I like to say they feel like a basketball. You know, they feel just like one. I try not to touch basketballs or snakes, so it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, do we have one more for this segment? Should we do one more? If we have okay. time, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we do. Bye, Doug. Anyway. Let's do it. <laughs> I think I'm doing pretty good. I think I'm doing pretty good. Is this now... Okay, so now this one, this is a python. So this is kind of a, a rarer species of python, though. It's called a woma python. They're native to Australia. Okay, now you said also, now here, let me just tell you. Australia is the home to a lot of deadly creatures. Is, is this one of them? Is, this is not, no. Okay, it's yeah. one of the few that actually is not venomous in Australia. Want to touch her? Um, let's talk more about her first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woma, I want to know. I, I, I want to know more information before I touch the creature. Uh, well, tell me about the species. Yeah, so Woma pythons live in such a hot area in Australia that during the hottest part of the day, they only touch a few inches of their belly to the sand at a time. Kind of like if you're walking on a hot sandy beach and you don't want to burn your feet. Uh, docile as well. Very docile. Yes. Uh, what is their diet? Uh, these are actually interesting. Although a lot of pythons eat rodents, the Woma pythons eat a lot of other reptiles or cold-blooded prey items. Oh, really? Yeah, isn't that cool? How do they feel about talk show hosts? Are uh, they good with that? Do you want to find out? You know, may I touch her? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Right, see? Okay, she has a slightly... Yeah. Now, it's not quite a basketball. It's, okay. It, it's like, I, I don't know. Football? She's softer. Oh, is she? Uh, yeah, She's I can softer. see that. Do you I wanna, enjoy her. Do you want to try holding this one? Uh, maybe, let me work up to holding. Okay. Maybe in Sounds the next good. segment, okay? Okay. I have another snake I can show you if you Great. want. Great. <laughs> we'll be right back with more snakes and Emily. Oh, more snakes. We thought it would be fun to scare the audience, so we moved into the studio audience for this segment. I like it. Welcome back, Emily from Snake Discovery is here. Okay, we gotta look at this before we get to the next snake. I heard about this video, I have not seen it and I couldn't believe it. Correct me if I'm wrong, is this you walking into a local pet smart yeah. with an alligator? That, that is me with our alligator, Rex. <laughs> How, what are you doing in the pet smart? We let her pick out a toy. No! <laughs> oh, look how Shut up! She's a very what, spoiled what alligator. What did she pick? I, she ended up picking a big jolly ball meant for big dogs. <laughs> that one. If I walked in PetSmart and I saw that, I, I love it. There we go. Okay, uh, we have two more snakes. Are you ready? Okay. You're far enough back. Front row, are you ready? Okay, you're good. Okay, what's the next one, Emily? We are gonna do one you guessed earlier. Oh my God. Oh. This. <laughs> Isn't she pretty? Look at that. Okay, what's that one? I'll this hold one. It for you. This no! <laughs> now, what's this one? This is a Burmese python. One you guessed earlier. The Burmese python, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, her name is Shika. These are native to Southeast Asia, but they are doing very well in the Everglades. This is that snake that's oh, taking over the Everglades right now. Because morons uh, get these snakes, don't know how to take care of them, <laughs> and release them, right? Yes, or they get oh. too big and they don't know how to cage a large animal. And they, they're one of the largest species of snake in the world. They get 18 feet long for females. Um, and are these docile as well? They are, yes. They have big appetites. <laughs> Notice that's always my second question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She is actually the smoothest, softest snake I brought, so you have to feel her. Okay, I'll touch her. Go for it. Her head's there, right? Okay, so we'll go. <laughs> oh! Right? Oh, so okay, soft. I'm good, 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 I'm good. Okay, she's nice. Now, what, is, uh, what, what does she eat? She eats rabbits. Oh. Yep. She loves to eat rabbits. In the wild, Billy, just about anything they can catch, though. Okay. 
Okay. I think, do you want to just try holding part of her? Yes. I think you should. I think you should. Okay. Because I'm, I'm actually going to need your help because she's wrapped around my mic. So can you peel her off there? Perfect. Okay. And then just, just kind of use both hands. Okay. There you go. <laughs> How about I'll hold her head? Hold her head. Okay, there, there we you go. go. Nice. I'm not even religious, and I was saying Lord and Jesus repeatedly. Yeah. Uh, do we have one more? Oh my God. Uh, are we still on? We are okay, yeah. Uh, we have one more. Can we see the yes. last one? Yes, we have my favorite species of snake okay. in the entire world. Is she going to attack row one? Uh, yeah. Um, no. Well, as long as you don't smell like rabbits, okay. you're okay. 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 Do, you, <laughs> do you smell like rabbit, ma'am? Okay. No, we're good. <laughs> We've never asked that before of our school audience. Yeah. Okay, All what right. are these? So these are my favorite snake in the world. These are called hognose snakes. They're named that because their nose is pushed up like a little pig or hog's nose at the end. Oh. Yeah, I have a normal one, like the colors you'd see in the wild, and an albino one, just to show the really cool colors they They're, come in. I will say those are actually beautiful. Right? Those are beautiful creatures. Yeah. Um, okay, my favorite question, are they docile? They are also yeah. very docile. You know, if these are scared, they're just big drama queens. They roll over and they play dead. That's what I do too. <laughs> 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 if I was a snake, I'd be that snake. That's right. Oh. Hey, you know, you were talking about baby snakes earlier. I brought some babies that just hatched this morning, if you want to see them. Yeah. Okay, we got to do it quick, but yeah. Are okay. they in a crib or whatever? They're, they, they're in, okay, yeah. <laughs> they are right in here. Oh my gosh. Oh my on God. The edges. So this, here, let me get one out. Okay, let's let's bring the jib over here. Come on. Oh my gosh. They are Sean, so can we get tiny. The, go up to that camera right there. Okay. Just right okay. there. And they'll take a shot right okay. there. Right. Here. Oh, yeah, we have them over here. Okay. Oops, sorry, got him. It's all right. It's all right. We're good. There we go. Right there. Stay put right there. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Yes. They are so tiny. Aren't they cute? They're registered at Babies R Us. <laughs> Give it up for Emily, everyone. Check out Snake Discovery. The YouTube channel, support Emily, and visit her website, snakediscovery.com. It's fun for the whole family. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Thank you, sweetie. That was so good. Those are so cute. Oh, she's kind of... Uh... Welcome back. No snakes in this segment, everyone. Well... Earlier, uh, I re uh, gave you my review of the new Indiana Jones movie. Harrison Ford returns as Indy in the fifth and final installment in this legendary movie series. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny opens tonight, later tonight, in select theaters. And Indy is the inspiration for game time. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, Indiana Jones is a summer movie staple, so today's game is eh, summer movie trivia. Here's how it's going to work. It's very easy. I'm going to ask uh, a series of multiple co uh, choice questions about famous summer movies. Playing today, to my left, give it up for Val, everyone. And then my friend Jenny. Okay, here we go. Uh, please do not buzz in until I have revealed all multiple choices. You'll still do it anyway, but I just always like to say that. Okay, here we go. Question number one. Which 80s star was originally offered the role of Indiana Jones? Ted Jan Danson, Tom Selleck, or Bruce Willis? Val. Tom Selleck. You are right. You are right. He went on to do Magnum P.I. instead. They, uh, CBS wouldn't let him out of the contract. Uh, next question. Indiana Jones is notoriously afraid of one creature. What is it? Snakes, spiders, or rats? Jenny. Snakes. Yes! 
It's the only thing I have in common with Indiana Jones. <laughs> Next. What type of candy is featured in the summer movie E.T., making it extremely popular in 1982? Reese's Pieces, Skittles, or M&M's? Val. Reese's Pieces. That's right. <laughs> 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 oh, Val, I love it, okay. Reese's Pieces. Here we go, next summer movie trivia question. What's the nickname of Jennifer Grey's character in Dirty Dancing, Honey, Baby, or Lovey? Jenny. Baby. Never put baby, baby in a corner. corner. That's right. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. I absolutely love that movie. Uh, here we go, next question. What other actresses were considered for the role of Baby in Dirty Dancing? Mm. Sarah Jessica Parker, Winona Ryder, Sharon Stone, or all of the above? Val. Sarah Jessica Parker. No, over to you, Jenny. All of the above. You are right. Mm. All of the above. <laughs> I can see all of them as Sharon Stone. Yeah. I can't, right? I not, can't see Sharon, Sharon Stone. Stone. I love no. her, but not with that. Okay, here we go. Right. What type of car does Ferris Bueller drive on his day off? A Porsche, a Lamborghini, or a Ferrari? Val. Ferrari? You are right. Yeah. You're right. I believe it just sold at auction, actually. I think it did, yeah, it did. Uh, next question. Which actor has not played Batman on the big screen? George Clooney? Henry Cavill or Michael Keaton? <laughs> Val. Clooney? No, over to you, Jenny. Uh, Henry Cavill or Michael Keaton? I think it was Cavill. You are right, yeah. he's Superman, that's right. <laughs> George, George Clooney played uh, Batman in the horrible Batman and Robin, horrible. Oh. Anyway, we have uh, one more, one more. Here we go, last question. What kind of car is the time machine in Back to the Future? Corvette, DeLorean, or a Pontiac G6? <laughs> Jenny? DeLorean? You are right. Yeah. You are right. Here's the deal. Congratulations to both players. They're going home with a four-pack. Thank Yay. you, intern Mason. A four-pack. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Good Lord, Mason. You're going home with a four pack of tickets to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on us. Plus, your own Indiana Jones fedora. And again, the new movie opens in select theaters late tonight or tomorrow. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time to meet our next JVIP, and we have two today. First up is Amy from Prescott, Wisconsin. Amy watches. Hi, Amy. She watches our show every day while grooming dogs in her grooming shop. Hey, that's what my mom. That's what my mom used to do. She says she plan. She tries to plan things out so the blow dryers aren't on during the show. Amy <laughs> loves all the great conversations we have. Amy, I love you. Next is Kelly from Hugo, Minnesota. She says we make her laugh every day, and she loves when I poke fun at the crew on the show. Uh, <laughs> Kelly also really 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 wants a mug well i have good news <laughs> both kelly and amy get a jason show mug they're also entered to win the monthly grand prize that includes being a vip guest in our studio audience a 150 dollars gift card to becker furniture world and a 150 dollars gift card to the institute of advanced aesthetics we'll be right back to wrap things up next <laughs> probably wondering oh, why the yeah. young people were here uh, we paid them and then also <laughs> you'll see their shirts they are going on tour at the beginning of July through the State Fair through the end of August Madagascar so stand up and turn around if you scan Soph's back it'll get you <laughs> tickets there's a QR code on Sophie's back right there. <laughs> <laughs> Pose. Go ahead, scan Sophie's back for ticket information. That is ingenuity right there with America's youth. That is great. 
We should do. We should wear those T-shirts for our show. We okay, should. Sophie, you can have a seat. Go ahead, Sophie. You can sit down now. <laughs> Thanks to this incredible audience, right? Thanks to this audience. Tomorrow, one of your favorites and mine, Colleen Lindstrom is back with some real talk for being parents uh, in 2023. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.